A dynamics problem. Can I use a TI-84 graphing calculator on the test? Yes, as long as it doesn't connect to the internet. Uh, we don't usually, you know, police the calculators too hard. Just as long as you're not on the internet getting things, then you're fine. Um, and now it's problem, here we go. We've got a spring here, and we have a mass here, all right? And we have an axis in X, and uh, we're gonna put it in the origin. So that's all what we just did. But now let's let it move. Let's solve the journey. What if it moves? What if it moves? Yeah, if you don't know what 270 plus theta meant, then don't worry about that. Just do the normal components. What, how? Okay, first of all, what is the general physical law for anything moving? What do you think we're going to use? Newtons. Second law, very good. I know you know. If you're too shy to say that, we're not going to get to the end of this together. Because something big is going to happen. Okay, so you guys have to just just get rid of that. Okay. So Newton's second law is: sum of the forces in the x equals mass on the acceleration of the x. No, there won't be a test review session. Uh, well, I mean, Thursday's class will be the test review session. Um, okay, so let's plug in. What is the force in the x minus kx? Right. So it goes forward a little bit, it'll get pushed back, it goes pushed back, it goes forward, it'll be fine. Uh, what is the mass? It's just the mass. What is the acceleration? Now we're reviewing the first two weeks of the class. What, was our, what is the acceleration really, if we wanted to write it in terms of the position? Which derivative is it? The second. So we could be bold and say, I'm going to go back to the second week of class, or the first week of class, and write it like that. And then, also, one thing I'm doing is I'm not using delta x's, right? So if, if, if rest is at the origin, x equals 0, then delta x basically just becomes x. Because right? delta x is x minus 0 everywhere you go. So I'm just calling it x to make this not look so bad. OK, so then I could rewrite that. I wanted to get this part by itself, this crazy derivative part. Um, minus k over m x. That just looks like, that's really, that's a differential equation. How many of you here are in differential equations right now? Okay, okay, you gotta get more bold. I saw one of these. Okay. Gotta, we gotta, we gotta, I don't know what we have to do. You guys do this lecture. Okay. That looks like a differential equation. Uh, we need to review it, or we need to solve it. So we've done this. Okay, so remember, when we were doing just, you throw something in gravity, this was just a constant. We had d2, x dt2 equals a over m, or something like that. 1 over m, whatever it was. And we solved it, and that led to constant acceleration kinematics. We could also have this idea of function of time. If I talked about jerk, like if we wanted to make um, a calculus-based problem, it would give you a force that depends on time. We're not going to do that to you. We did it one one. We'll let you guys off the hook on that. But what would you do? You would take the integral of both sides. You would take the integral of this to get it to the velocity. And then, blah, 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 you'd get something. Because you take the integral of this with respect to time, and you keep going. Like if this had been constant, then what would it be? It'd be c times t, and you take another one, and you'd get 1 half c t squared. So remember, we were doing calculus when we solved all this. I think I did it for you graphically, and I did it for you with calculus, and I also just gave you the equations. I think we did all levels of calculus. <laughs> when and where is the exam? <laughs> You'll figure it out. Just follow the depressed crowd at 6.45 on campus. <laughs> okay, but now we've got to solve this, right? This is all fantasy, right? This is all easy. Look at this. How do we solve this? So we look at this and we say, okay, well, we have acceleration, we want to get velocity. So we take a derivative, or we take an integral with respect to time. How do we take the integral with this with respect to time? One answer is it must be 1 half k over m x squared. No, that's not what it is. We're not taking the derivative with respect to x. This is a case where we've got to remember, x is our, in, our dependent variable. Time is our independent variable. You might say, well, maybe it's a constant. So it's 1, it's minus k over m x t. No, it's not a constant, because x is going to change in time, because this is a dynamic problem. So we've got to write down here the integral of x with respect to time. How do we do that? We don't know what x is. We can't take the integral of the function. We don't know what it is. 
So how do you solve this differential equation? This is the, like the first most fundamental differential equation that you face, and we can't you can't solve it by integration. Does anybody know how you solve it? You guess. That's how you solve this differential equation. If I didn't know that, when I was a differential equation, I would not have gotten a D. Uh, but don't worry, I reached up differential equations and I got a C. So you're in good hands. Everything is fine. But the answer really is that you guess. Um, you look at this and you say, what function do I know that's equal to its own second derivative within constants and negative signs? Can we think of one? Um, mathematicians don't like to admit that they're guessing. They'll say, we're going to construct a solution of functions that do this. Theoretical physicists don't admit it either. They say, we're going to begin with the following ansatz. You ever heard anybody say that, ansatz? A-N-S-A-T-Z. That's German for guess. That's really what that means. It means outset. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play the number game. So I need five 125 students who actually have the constitution to come down here Yes, I need five. This will be, you're not going to remember these public, you're not going to remember all this garbage. This is what you're going to remember. Right? It will be so fun. Come on. All you're going to do is guess a function. I need five. It's not a race. Five. five. Hey, get out of here. Yeah, Shams. Come on. Sure. Handsome, right? Yes. Yeah, they always come to class. Okay. Anybody else? Five. Come on. It's very easy. If, you, if you're really bothered by this, don't. Please don't. If you're feeling a little bit bold. I need four more people. I will be one of them, and I'll win. Okay. I need three people. Three people. Dr. Stinson, get down here. Okay. I need two people. There's one person here for faculty all days, but I believe they're in the humanities, so I'm not going to force them. Two brave souls. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. This is a fun class. Oh, my God. All right. Here we go with three. You ready? There are five functions that are equal to their own second derivative. Get it! Oh, come on. You don't want to. Okay. There are five functions equal to their own second derivative within a constant. We have to write them and see who, who, like when you get one, you get to sit down. You better hurry. Uh, five functions equal to their own second derivative within a constant. All right, I'm sitting down. Uh, the derivative of the sine is negative cosine. The derivative of cosine is sine. Edex, Dr. Fiesta can take us. Two the negative side doesn't matter. You're done. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> so a function equal to its own second derivative, which is within a constant. <laughs> uh, okay, you can see. Can anybody think of another one? You can yell it from there. You don't have to come up there. If sine does it, what else might do it? Cosine. Oh, oh, you <laughs> I used to draw the names out of a bucket and make people come down, and well being asked me to stop doing this. <laughs> okay, can anybody think of uh, another one? There's another one. So sine, cosine, e to the x, what other functions equal its own second derivative to within a constant? Okay, we did sine and cosine, right? This is sine and cosine. If you look, that's actually the answer. That's what it does. It moves as a sine and a cosine. We guessed correctly. Anybody think of another one? Especially if I do this. Function equal to its own second derivative within a constant that solves the equation of motion and therefore is represented by a specific kind of motion like that. Zero, Zero the trivial solution. Very good. We're guessing good now. What about e to the x? Oh, maybe, but if you plug that in, you get imaginary numbers. That can't be right. And then what about the fifth one? Who knows what the fifth one is? There is no fifth one. I always bring out a fifth person and I let them sweat it for like 30 seconds. Because <laughs> you never know. It's Bryce. Too. You might come up with like some unknown function. <laughs> that was the number games. I didn't wear the blue wing, so I guess it was my fault for not kicking it off. So this is what we'll talk about when we get to harmonic motion. This was basically a preview, right? But the answer is that you guess the answer. You guess it must be some function, some amplitude, sign. Let's put something in front of the B. T like that. And then once you guess, you plug it in and see if it works. That's how it works. Okay? That's dynamics with a spring. We aren't going to get too deep into dynamics uh, with a spring. But the way you know it works is you go to the reality and you say, oh my god, it works. That also might tell you something about exponential functions that they can oscillate under certain mathematical conditions. There's a mind blower. Okay, so what we can do next is look at uh, how 
spring courses are related to some of the other courses. It also makes us a little bit more like a review. Uh, for the